to Billy's Place. I'm Billy Hinchy. This is the New York Show. And of course, I got to kick it off with a bang. So welcome. This is my 42nd show. It is a pleasure to be with you nice folks tonight. I am delighted that you are here. Welcome to the people who've been here before. Or welcome to anybody who's new that's never been here before. I, uh, I welcome your support and your patronage. Uh, thank you for being here. It's, uh, it's an honor for me to come into your living rooms and welcome to mine. So anyway, that, in case you didn't know, was the Ramones. Uh, the very, really the very first true punk rock group formed in 1974. And uh, they're from Forest Hills, Queens, New York, representing and in my vast research, I found out that their name is inspired when they heard that Paul McCartney used to check into hotels under the pseudonym of uh, Paul Ramon. <laughs> yeah, so they all changed their name, or their, they used the name Ramon uh, for their all of their last names, which I think is kind of a novel idea. And um, yeah, uh, they teamed up with the Beach Boys not too long ago, and they recorded a... Uh, a remake of, uh, the Beach Boys did, a remake of the Ramones song, Rockaway Beach. And uh, I think they performed it out there in Jones Beach. Uh, I think, yeah, I saw YouTube on that. Uh, good song, good uh, representation. And, uh, you know, I always thought it'd be interesting for the Ramones and Dino, Desi, and Billy to pair up. What do you think? It was never to be, but that was my little fantasy. <laughs> East Coast meets West Coast. I thought it would have been cool. And, um, you know, D, D, and B, we had the reputation of being, you know, the rebel kind, you know, and uh, not the loving kind. So we were kind of tough, you know, ourselves. <laughs> For Beverly Hills, that is. Anyway, the Ramones were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2002. They got the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, Achievement Award in 2008. So good for them. I'm gonna take a little, well, I think I'll just pull up this couch here and keep talking. I wanna welcome you to the show uh, and invite you to hit the share button if you haven't already. I'd like to invite everybody to go to my website, billyhinchy.com, all manner of things available to see and do there. 
and uh, go to my YouTube channel, Billy Hinchy Official. All of these shows, all 41 that preceded this one, are there. They're for you to view all kinds of subjects from the Holland album to to a, a Beach Boys show, a Dino Desi and Billy show, an Elvis show, Christmas show, Halloween show, all kinds of shows. And they are all free, my brothers and sisters. They are all free. They don't cost anything, as is this show. However, may I say, if you would be so inclined, uh, I would be very appreciative if you would send in a little something via PayPal or Venmo to help keep this show going and uh, Saturday nights, you and me, uh, that'd be great. I much appreciate it. I'll write you a personal note of thanks and always a portion of the proceeds goes to Music Cares helping musicians. And um, let's see, what else do I have to tell you? Yeah, I want to thank uh, Smiling Ed Carter for being my special guest last week. He called in and, uh, you know, he was a buddy of Steve Miller's and he told some great Steve Miller stories, and uh, thank you, Ed Carter. Roger McGuinn did my beautiful PSA for me uh, uh, earlier uh, in the week. Thank you, Roger. And uh, the graphics this week were done by Matt Failert, uh, The Silent P is the name of his company. And the graphic that was used this week on my website, on my Facebook, it's been entered into a contest the Academy of Visual, Interactive, and Visual Artists in New York City. That's where it has been entered in a competition for great art uh, design, I guess, something like that. I don't know exactly the category. And may I say, uh, as a birthday greeting, I'd like to send to Mary Rhodes. Mary is a dear friend up there in Orem, Utah. Uh, Mary, many happy returns of the day. God bless you. And there's a special announcement that I read last week I want to share with you. Marcy Colvin Williams, she wrote to me, uh, Billy, today is our 49th wedding anniversary and we are celebrating it with you. Isn't that sweet? So last week was their 49th wedding anniversary. So God bless uh, Marcy and your husband. Way to go. Uh, yeah, good for you. Oh, and uh, the trivia contest winner last week was, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Brian Lee or Brianne Lee. Um, correctly identified Sly Stone's real name as Sylvester Stewart. Yes, and I sent him a number 14 baggage sticker, which was my own personal baggage sticker. Thank you very much. When I toured with the Beach Boys. Uh, and, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, uh, oh, I also wanted to tell you, you know, um, I tried real hard to get Jesse Collin Young to call in last week. And um, Jesse Collin to call in. I like that. Uh, and uh, I was unable to. Some, You know, we had some communication breakdown, and uh, he didn't find out till after the fact. So he wrote me a really beautiful uh, email, which I'm either going to read at the end of the show, because I got a lot of show. Did I tell you this New York show got a lot of music, got a lot of songs, got a lot of stories. And I got a great special guest calling in in just a few minutes, so stick around. But as far as the, the Jesse Colin Young email, I'm, I'm either going to read it at the end of the show, depending on how much time has elapsed, or I'm going to put it up on my Facebook page, okay? Fair enough? All right, I'm going to put this old guitar down for a moment and um, move over here for just a sec and turn on, uh, tune in and... What was that saying? Turn on, tune in, drop out? <laughs> Boy, if that wasn't a 60s slogan, I don't know what was. I think I said that right. I gotta take a little sip and I'm gonna play my opener. As if that wasn't a big enough opener, I'm gonna do my usual opener. But before I do, I wanted to ask you, um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> two things. Uh, I'm gonna bring this show to New York City soon when everything clears up. I have a standing invitation from the cutting room. My good friends there, Steve Walter and his partner, Chris Noth, the uh, famous actor, 
they've invited me carte blanche whenever you want Billy we'd love to have you so I'm coming to the city one of these days soon I was destined to be there you know already but uh, you know things change so anyway as far as Las Vegas is concerned you know it, you know some of the parishioners at, at my Catholic Church they've been throwing uh, casino chips into the collection basket and so the church has to send them out to the Franciscans uh, uh, to sort uh, the monastery up there so they, they sort them and they count them so I guess you could say they've been uh, counted and cashed they're, they're being counted by chipmunks <coughs> yes the first of many I hate to warn you hello my friend it's good to see you again I guess it's been a few years Them good old days when we laugh and say, Hey, hey, man, you're okay. You're staying nice and easy now. Well, it's a brand new year, 2021. Lots of things are happening. Hey, hey. Good things are coming my way. Tell me how you've been. There's so much you got to do. There's my caller. Stop with the music. Stop with the music. Hello. <laughs> Hello, my friend. Oh, it's so good to hear your voice. I'm so happy uh, that you are going to be on my little show. And uh, boy, you put a big old smile on my face. Do you mind if I put you on speaker and introduce you to my viewers? <laughs> okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, what can I say? This gentleman and I go back to the 60s he's one of my he's one he's laughing one of my personal heroes i've got to work with him a little bit over the years one of the greatest songwriters ever and uh one of the good guys and i'm featuring his music tonight ladies and gentlemen this is the legendary john sebastian howdy <laughs> hello to your listeners and hello to you billy well, thank you so much. How are things back there? You're, you're in Woodstock, aren't you? Yes. Uh, I mean, I must say, I, I, I feel almost guilty I'm so okay. <laughs> you know, here we are out, out in the country where it, uh, it's much easier to be sequestered. Uh, uh, you know, the, of course, the dogs can't believe how many walks they're getting, but... It, it, it's it's a kind of an odd world that we're in right now, but uh, uh, we're the lucky ones. Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say so. Uh, thank God. Uh, it's uh, been a pretty good life for me and, and you. I mean, my gosh. That's right. Yeah, we've had some great times. You know, I remember, I wonder if you remember, uh, you know, Carl Wilson was my brother-in-law, and he and my sister Annie, we went over to your home do you remember you guys rented the spoonful rented a place in west hollywood and had a party one night that we came by uh do you remember that does that ring a bell at all well you know uh i know that there were several of those and very often sort of instituted by yanovsky not necessarily by me i see so i was i was sort of there whether i wanted to be or not okay but, well i uh, then uh, subsequently uh i saw uh, the spoonful uh they were one of the acts uh several acts i think um we talked about uh bobby fuller four uh, you guys the rose bowl show oh at the rose bowl i remember you guys at the um hollywood bowl in 66 67 when uh uh you guys were just uh on fire and and just uh, very, very successful, and uh, you know, uh, and then we went on to work you as a solo 
I remember uh, a, a few dates, one in particular at the Boston Garden. When yeah, you... there were some things where I was just opening up the, like a uh, kind of a one guy, one guitar act. Right, that's what I'm doing now. It's only taken me 50 years to figure it out, what you've been doing for so long. <laughs> it's like, just don't hire the, two, the really good 20 plus or guitar player. Stop yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, listen, you told me a funny story about when the Spoonful opened for the Beach Boys in the early 60s when Brian was still in the band. Would you tell that funny story, what Al Jardine told you? You know the one I mean. Well, he reminded me of a, st a story actually in one of those shows where I think we were all, all together in, uh, in a kind of a later time. But what we were laughing about was that the Spoonful and the Beach Boys did a summer tour where we were you know, on sequential days, playing sequential places. Uh -huh. And Yanofsky quickly figured out that Brian hated lateness or, or you know, he wanted everything to be going on schedule. Uh -huh. You shouldn't tell Sal Yanofsky something like that. Because what he did, of course, was to say, let's drag it out, and Brian is going to want to just go, oh, God, let, let's just go on. And, and fellas, we can close for the Beach Boys, not open. <laughs> and that was, that was a, a, a several, several times uh, that... Uh, I was actually, Al Chartine was reminding me of this. That is really funny. Well, you were complicit in that, John, so you can't blame Sally for the whole thing, right? No, certainly. No, no, as soon as he brought it up. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, you know how, uh, I mean, rock and roll bands, they turn into gangs within the first year. <laughs> yes, and speaking of gangs, uh, our, our, our buddy Desi Arnaz Jr., who I once had a group with, uh, with Dina, right. he's watching the show right now, and he says to say hello. Oh, well, wonderful. That's terrific, and, and my regards to him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, um, gosh, uh, you know, I, I'm going to ask you a question. I get asked this every now and again. It's a tough question, but I'm going to ask you anyway. In fact, it's a two-part question. What is your favorite Beach Boy song? I know you're a Beach Boy fan. And oh, what is what yes. is your yeah, what is a, your favorite Spoonful song? I know it's a tough question, but and you've written so many. My gosh, your catalog is deep and wide, but a favorite Beach Boy song, favorite Spoonful song. Okay. Uh, it, uh really there was something different about I get around. Hmm. I, I was already a, a rabid fan of all of those cool three chord surfer tunes and uh, wonderful harmonies and so on but i get around was a point of departure i, I remember because uh felix papillardi and i were a f were frequently paired in greenwich village as as accompanists for oh. things and he'd be playing bass and i'd play usually harmonica mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, uh, the that particular tune, he was the first one to say, this is Bach. <laughs> I'm not fooled by this. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, yeah, he was saying, you know, really, look at these changes. This is very Johann Sebastian Bach. And... Uh, uh, I hadn't really thought of it that way, but I was immediately on the guitar going, where is he going in these chords? Yeah, it's a it's an intricate song. I, I, I know it well, and it's all over I'll the... I'll bet you do. <laughs> I've played it a few thousand times, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that one is certainly, for, uh, you know, uh, really, and, and also Surfer Girl, Oh yes. Kills me. Oh that's yeah. Just not gonna go away, and uh, yeah. that's sort of it's like a theme song for my wife. 
who I met out in California. Not not a, not really a California girl, but I I did meet her there, and uh, that uh -huh. was a period when she was looking like the surfer girl. Um, so uh, that was uh, certainly that was big one, and uh, you were asking about the spoonful thing, yeah. and so that really has to be the first one, which was, do you believe in magic? Of course. Because that was the one that kind of made everything else possible, and it also gave me the confidence to, uh, uh, to continue this crazy enterprise. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly the, the jumping off point. I, I want to ask you as a, a songwriter, we, I mean, you're, you know, you you're just uh, incredible uh, as a songwriter. I've written a few songs myself. In fact, I have a common, uh, I share a commonality with you in the sense that you wrote a television theme song for a very popular show. I wrote a television theme song for Desi's show, Auto Man. Of course. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, of course, everybody knows uh, your song, Welcome Back. But uh, yeah, but anyway, beyond that, this is a songwriter question. Uh, is it always different when you write a song? Is it the same process? Are you always inspired? Is it some? Sometimes it comes slow. Sometimes it's fast. Is it like that? Or how's your? What's your uh, your modus operandi for songwriter in general? Uh, you know, Billy, I'm 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 very undisciplined, so I, I don't have a pattern. Okay. Uh, but I do I do respond to things like phrases. Mm hmm. Or I respond to a set of changes that either I, I know what song I'm thinking of or I don't. It's usually better if I can't quite figure it out and I can just keep going on whatever I'm, uh, you know, trying to un unpack. Uh huh. Well, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting process for me too. It's never quite the same. But I thought I'd ask you. Uh, yeah. What what are you doing now? You tell me you're working with Will Lee and Jimmy Vivino and doing uh, good deeds for folks in need. Would you tell the folks a little bit about that before I carry on? I got a lot of show to do, a lot of your songs to sing, but I thought we, uh, you know, talk about your work, what you're doing these days. Okay, well, well, there's just one misfire, which is that the Will Lee uh, Jimmy Vivino con uh, connection. That's the fab foe. But uh, uh, I was involved with uh, Jimmy uh, Vivino and uh, 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 Pagano, their wonderful drummer, ah. uh, in a, a, a couple of... One thing was a benefit for the Bardavan Theater. Yeah. Another one was a benefit for, like, kind of old blues folks who, who aren't the top here. Gotcha. Uh, that, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, that can't uh, really, they don't have anything to fall back on. Uh, so so th th that was a wonderful idea. I mean, it was easy. It was, I didn't, you know, no big deal. It was playing along with uh, Jimmy and, and Pagano, and so that's always good. Yeah. Uh, but we were calling it the uh, Darwin Effect. That was our band name. Well, that's a great name. Yeah. Doing good things uh, uh, for those uh, in need. I think that's wonderful. John, I cannot thank you enough for calling in. My audience is going berserk, uh, commenting th that you are here. Desi keeps giving you shout outs. So. Yeah, now really, say hi to Desi, who, I mean, really, we first met at like nine or something, uh, you know, because my, my non-actual blood aunt uh, was uh, Vivian Vance. And, oh my gosh. And Viv. Well, she was Aunt Viv to our family because Viv and my mom uh, had kind of they didn't come to New York together, but it was a very similar story. They had come from, you know, in Mom's case, Dayton, and and uh, Viv was uh, also, I, I'm not sure where she, she claimed she was from New Mexico, but that was because she was, uh, it, uh, had theatrical success first there. Mm -hmm. But, uh yeah, because of uh, Viv's connection, uh, I think uh, 
Jesse and I were kind of playing on the floor a little bit there. Wow. A while. Not, not, not often or anything, but uh, it was a kind of a connection that when I, when we did meet up again in sort of rock and roll times, I said, you know, we had to have been playing on the floor, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, it could have been Dino, Desi, and John. Anyway, on that happy note, John, thank you so much uh, for calling in. I could spend all night with you. Maybe we'll do a whole show with you some night. Uh, and uh, God bless you and your family. Thank you so much. I, it really means a lot to me, John. Thank you. Well, thanks, Billy. All right. We'll talk to you. We'll talk to you sometime again soon. Thanks, buddy. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Come on. John Sebastian? Give me a break. Let go of my arm, John Sebastian. Come on. I'll stop my opening song for John Sebastian any day of the week. I'm not even going to bother finishing it. Who needs my crummy old song when you've got John Sebastian songs forthcoming? Well, here's to John and his wonderful family and the beautiful music that he's contributed to the world. Oh, man. God bless you, John. Whoa, <clears throat> isn't he interesting and funny and nice and everything else? Oh, I gotta tell you, before I move into the next artist here, I was wondering if, uh, if you got your stimulus check yet? I haven't gotten mine, I'm still waiting. My friend the farmer, he got his and he bought a bunch of chickens. Yeah, he got his money for nothing and his chicks for free. What? That is crazy. All right, let's move into the next segment. Joan Jett, come on. I'm gonna play you some of her material here and tell you some stories. Even though this is a New York show, she's got her start in LA, but you know, I think of her as New York. She lives in New York. She's out there in Long Beach, New York, and uh, she's a New York resident, but she got started in LA with the Runaways. And, uh, a friend of mine, Kim Fowley, discovered them, and. One thing led to another, and uh, you know, she, they used to all hang out at Rodney Bingenheimer's English Disco, and then she formed the Black Hearts. The Runaways were 60s. The Black Hearts formed in the 80s. She had her own label. She opened for everyone. I mean, my gosh, the list of people goes on and on for ZZ Top and Queen and Aerosmith and The Who and. Uh, the Beach Boys, that's how I got to know her. And I used to visit her in her dressing room before the show. And she was always very welcoming and come on in and we chatted and she'd be getting ready and she'd have one of her girlfriends combing her hair and getting their wardrobe ready. Joan always looked great on stage, great attitude, really, uh, really kick-ass show uh, every night with her. and. Uh, I spoke with her uh, longtime uh, lead guitar player, uh, Ricky Bird, earlier today, and he was telling me how um, she was an original and uh, absolute uh, sweetheart. They never had an argument or anything and the whole time they were together. Um, they had a Joan Jett day in uh, West Hollywood in 2013. They dedicated that day to Joan. And in 2014, she uh, started a line of clothing, Hot Topic. Maybe some of you have heard of it. Um, she's had three different custom Gibson guitars made for her. And uh, her original white melody maker was Eric Carmen's, our friend Eric Carmen. You know Eric from the Raspberries and his own you know, successful career. He sold it to her. He wrote all his hit records on, on that guitar. Then she got it and she wrote a bunch of hits. Joan opened for the Beach Boys a couple of times in 85 at the uh, Lamar University in Beaumont, Texas, and at the Oil Palace in Tyler, Texas. And um, the big one was July 4th, 1985 in Philadelphia. We played for a million people. I've addressed uh, that show uh, in previous Live from Billy's Places uh, uh, episode. You remember that show with Jimmy Page, the Oak Ridge Boys, uh, Stamos was there, the Neville Brothers, Frank Stallone, Katrina and the Wave, the Bellamy Brothers, New Edition, Southern Pacific Four Tops. Anyway, 
big, big show. Um, and I am now going to play some of Joan's rock music, of which she is so well known for. I kind of got to get set up here a little bit with the, uh, with the tempo and everything on my little machine over here, so bear with me. All right, we're putting the drummer to work tonight. Sorry, Desi, I got a guy that worked for cheap. <laughs> okay, I got to find, uh, okay, here we go. 006 we're looking for. Yep, that's it. Tempo 95. Oh, yeah. Look out. Joan would open with this sometimes. Here we go. warming up here. <laughs> that was the ballad. Wait till you hear the rest of them. That is crazy. I want to tell you, I love New York, but you know, I was in the city. The last time I was in the city, a police officer complimented me on my driving. Yeah, an officer complimented me on my driving in the city. He left a real nice note on my car that said, Parking? Fine. That wasn't the sound I wanted. That wasn't the sound I wanted at all. I wanted this sound. Gee, tough room. Oh, uh, I had a Q&A here. This is our Q&A segment. I had kind of a similar question from both Tony Soprano and uh, Lee Hastings. 
they both kind of wanted to know how did uh, I, the Beach Boys, Carl, get involved with Joan Jett to make this song, record this song, Good Music, uh, which is the next song I'm going to play. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's on her Good Music album. You might want to pick it up. It's a lovely song. We uh, were on the road, as I recall, and uh, we got the word that Joan wanted us to sing on her uh, album. So, of course, we agreed. We went to, I think it was Electric Ladyland. And uh, it was the Beach Boys, Mike, Al, Carl, Bruce, me, maybe Matt Jardine. I don't remember exactly. But the great Darlene Love was also there. So it was quite a background vocal group that Joan had for this uh, song that I'm about to do. Let's see, what have I got? Okay, yeah. I mean, what a great gig, right? Getting to sing with Joan Jett. You know, the toughest job I ever had, toughest job, selling doors door to door. Now that's a tough job. It'd be like, hello, would you like to buy a door? Oh, you already have a door. Ah, okay. Whatever is clever. All right, I have got to, um, I've got to get a, a, a tempo here, folks. Just bear with me. I'm looking for style 33. Come on now. 33, 33. Does anybody have a 33? And bingo. Tempo at 115. Here we go. Slow it down a little. Here we go. Oh, 
And then Darlene Love starts singing those beautiful high parts that she is known so well for. You know, um, I'm looking at the clock on the wall, and boy, we are going to go more than an hour tonight. I guarantee that. I hope you stick with me. There's a lot more music to play, a lot more stories to tell. Here's looking at you. This is my house drink. Lipton Cold Brew Iced Tea, Splash of Pellegrino, Splash of Lemonade. Uh, lemon wedge and a lot of ice. Here's to Joan Jett. Good music. I believe in that. <coughs> okay, I gotta set a new tempo. <clears throat> um, did you hear that um, Time Magazine just announced that exaggerations went up a million percent last year? A million percent. Yeah. Oh, you know, I, it's time for a trivia contest. That's what, it that's what time it is. Yeah. Here is tonight's great big prize from my personal archives. This is a postcard, a promo postcard that was used to promote the Beckley Lamb Wilson project. Yeah. Jerry Beckley of America, Robert Lamb of Chicago, and Carl Wilson of the Beach Boys. This here card is in mint condition, and I will send this to you if you can answer this question successfully. If you've already won, please uh, don't uh, participate in our little contest here so to give others a chance to win. Um, so here's the question, very simple. We did, the Beach Boys sang on this song for Joan, uh, Good Music. There was another song that we did at that session, another song that we sang, and that's what I want to know. What was the song that the Beach Boys backed up Joan on that same session that we did, uh, the Good Music session? I'll give you a hint. It was a Beach Boys song, okay? So write and go and do and be, and uh, good luck. I will review the uh, answers, and I'll let somebody know at the end of the... Uh, tomorrow or so, after I've read everything, who won, okay? All right. I got to set a tempo here. Good golly, Miss Molly. Okay, drums, tempo at nine. Oh, this is pretty easy. This is pretty easy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ain't no thing. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing on a string. <laughs> okay. I think I got it here, coming down the bend. Oh yeah, feels good. Number one for seven weeks, this song, 1982. It's in the Grammy Hall of Fame. Got inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame in 2016. You know who Ronda Rousey is? Yeah, this is her walk-in music.
Yeah. See, I can use this old whammy bar because I'm not going to use this guitar anymore tonight. So, <laughs> if it's out of tune now, I really don't care. I'm moving over here. I'm moving on. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. What is next? What in the heck is that? By the way, that song, uh, I Love Rock and Roll, was written by a cat named Jake Hooker, who is actually uh, Al Jardine's manager for a little while. And um, he told me that he heard the Rolling Stones song, It's Only Rock and Roll. It's only rock and roll. And he decided, well, I'm going to write a song about I love rock and roll. So that's how that one got written. Um, yeah, Joan got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2015. And uh, God bless her, she's, she is a true rocker and a, a truly great artist and a, a really nice person. I love Joni, she's, she is just fantastic. I was wondering uh, if you knew, what do you call fake spaghetti noodles? What, what's a fake spaghetti noodle? That's an impasta. Did you know that? <laughs> Always happens to me. I've got to be more prepared. What's wrong with you people? That's more like it. Okay, I'm going to do something really special tonight. I'm going to do something I have never done before. How's that? I'm going to do a little wardrobe change here for this next little trick I'm going to be doing. <laughs> I don't know how to set this one up other than to say the Beach Boys did a song with the Fat Boys. You feel me? You see where I'm going with this? Back there in uh, the early 80s, Fat Boys, they came out of Brooklyn and uh, their, their album, 1987 album of Crushing, it went platinum because they teamed up with the Beach Boys for this next song. I know some of you know where I'm going with this. Can you believe that I'm going to do this? I'm actually going to do this. And so we're on the plane and Mike Love says to me, after the Beach Boys and Fat Boys have a big hit with this song, he says, say, uh, why don't you try learning the words to this song and you can do it on stage. So I went ahead and I learned this song. I used to come out and wear crazy outfits. I had gold made jackets and all kinds of crazy. I had a suit that lit up and uh, oh my gosh. I did it for years with the guys, you know. So now it's time for me to represent West Coast and the East Coast, but I'm gonna do something special. I'm gonna do something special while I'm finding the style here. I'm looking for a 1116, 1116. Talk to me, 1116. And uh, you may have seen me do this on stage a bunch of times. However, why is this not, hang on now, 1116, bear with me. This will be worth it, I promise you. I promise you that. Uh, what you don't know is that there was a time when, um, here we go, we did this song for the FBI. We did this during a show, we did a private show for the FBI, DEA, ATF, all in the J. Edgar Hoover courtyard there. <coughs> and I rewrote the lyrics. Is that crazy? I rewrote the lyrics to wipe out and I changed it, and I'm going to do it for you tonight. Never done this before. It's crazy. Hope you like it. Yeah, I think this is it. Oh, yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Here we go. For 60 years straight, they toured the nation. When we got through, we needed a vacation. We wanted to party and get a little rest. So we packed our thing and we headed out west. Well, we got the surfboard, got the beach ball out. 
Shut the limousine, ready to wipe out. When we got to California, we headed for the beach. There were girls galore, all within our reach. There was sand and sun and lots of fun. But when we got there, the fun had really begun. So we turned up the box and started to shout. Let's all sing the song they call the wipeout. Well, the sun went down and the night began. We was hanging with the brothers called Chillin', my man. Oh, we was partying hard, making lots of noise. When around the corner came the real beach boy. So we all jumped up and started to shout. Let's all sing the song they call the wipeout. You feel me? Many years now they have served our nation. The FBI is a cool operation. They get the bad guys and put them in the slam. They take care of business like a nobody can. Don't mess with the feds cause there ain't no doubt. Five will get you ten, you're going to wipe out. Now, you can run, but you cannot hide. Don't matter if you're Dillinger or Bonnie and Clyde. If you make the ten most wanted list, they're going to put some bracelets on your nasty wrist. Don't mess with the feds, could there ain't no doubt. Five will get you ten, you're going to wipe out. Now, if you're thinking of a robbing a bank, you'll probably end up in a holding tank. They'll take you to the big house and they'll say bye-bye Cause sucker you've been messing with the FBI Don't mess with the feds cause there ain't no doubt Seven come eleven worth you're gonna wipe out Word What can I say? What can I say? But I'm glad we got that one out of the way. I hope you enjoyed that. A little levity. I guess it would be called the comic relief portion of my show. All right. Let's get back to playing something a little bit more melodic, shall we say? A little bit more melodic. I got to do a song here, though. Uh, you know, even though it was recorded in L.A. and it was done by... Uh, you know, the, the Wrecking Crew played on it, and it's very, uh, uh, well, done at Gold Star Studio, produced by Phil Spector. This is such a New York feeling song for me that uh, I included it tonight. Uh, I know you know it. A little bit loud.
Ronnie Spector. Wow, what a voice. Uh, I remember, uh, I met Ronnie, I think it was at David Letterman's show, and I invited her to see a Beach Boys show out at Jones Beach. Once again, Jones Beach comes into the story. Um, and so she and her husband, uh, not Phil Spector, <laughs> and a different gentleman, they rode out in the van with us, with us musicians, and I remember taking her backstage to meet Carl. Apparently Carl had never met her, because when they did meet, he said to her, you know, I stayed up all night practicing, I can hear music, because I knew I was gonna be singing it, recording it the next day, so I really wanted to do a great job on it, so that let me know that they had never met. And Ronnie was incredible. She came out and uh, I think we did I Can Hear Music that night. Anyway, that song right there, Be My Baby, I think it's pretty well known how much Brian Wilson loved it. He called it the greatest pop record of all time, which is really saying something. And um, yeah, I heard, I heard him play it many, many times at his home. Just kept lifting that needle and putting it down on that drum intro. Boom, 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 bop, boom, 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 bop. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have that setting on my, <laughs> my little keyboard here. Otherwise, I would have done it. Now, if Desi were here, he could, could have done it for you. But uh, alack, he is not. Um, uh, Rolling Stone uh, said it was the Rosetta Stone for studio pioneers such as the Beatles and Brian Wilson as far as production value and this and that. And um, it was written by Jeff Berry, Ellie Greenwich. Phil Spector also got a writing credit on it. Uh, oh, may I throw in a little nod to Lee Hazelwood? Lee, Lee was uh, a, a, a little sort of a precursor to Phil, and Phil was sort of a protege of, of Lee's. And Lee was Dino Desi and Billy's producer. Anyway. Just these little facts. 1999, this, that song was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame. So that's pretty good. Um, all right. We're at the Love and Spoonful. We've, the, the show's already an hour long, and we're just getting to the spoonful. So this thing could go 90 minutes tonight. So I'm not going anywhere. I hope you can stick with me here. We'll see. We'll see. Um, Love and Spoonful, East Coast folk rock out of Greenwich Village. It kind of reminded me of the birds, you know, folk rock, sort of a different, a little bit softer version, you know, but uh, led by John Sebastian, multi-instrumentalist, you know, guitar, harmonica, auto harp, uh, writer, songwriter, lead vocalist, frontman, you know, incredible. And the other band members, uh, Joe Butler on drums, Zal Yanovsky on lead guitar. He played an interesting Guild um, Polaris guitar. Remember, it had an odd shape to it. And Steve Boone on bass. And I was a big fan of their music. They were on the Ed Sullivan Show a number of times. And uh, uh, as I was mentioning to John, I, I met him at one of those parties in West Hollywood. Uh, you know, sort of everybody wandering around, had a big yard, two-story building, and wandered from room to room, and the candles and the incense were going, you know. And um, John and I are fellow homespun tape or video uh, instructors. I, I uh, did a video, instructional video, play songs with the Beach Boys, and John has done so many instructional videos for homespun, whether it was guitar, harmonica, auto harp, you name it. So I need a little help with you folks out there, I want you to sing along with me. I'm going to start with with my favorite uh, Spoonful song, all right? You didn't have to be so nice. I would have liked you anyway. If you had just looked once or twice, gone upon your
take your place. I knew that it would be that way. The minute that I saw your face, today I said that the time was right for me to follow you. I knew I'd find you in a day or two, and it's true. Wow, that to me is reminiscent of a Beach Boys song, melody, chords, that's my favorite Spoonful song, and uh, yeah, yeah, that, uh, that's a beauty. All right, well let's keep going here. Tell you. Woo! 
What a great song. Oh my gosh. I gotta tell you, I made a big decision today. I, 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 had, I sold my vacuum cleaner. Yeah. It was just collecting dust anyway. <laughs> oh my. Well, I'm doing a little more guitar picking. I got several more songs to play, folks, so I hope you're gonna hang out with me. I'm having a good old time. As Dean Martin used to say, this is better than going out. <clears throat> After all, I, I put this show together, I practiced all week, and by golly, I'm gonna play these songs. Nashville Cats, I play clean as country water. Nashville Cats, play wild as Mountain Dew. Before they're two. Well, there's 1,352 guitar pickers in Nashville. And they can pick more notes than a number of bands on the Tennessee Ant Hill. Yeah, there's 1,352 guitar cases in Nashville. And any one of them that unpacks his guitar can play twice as better than I will. Yeah, I was just 13, you might say I was a musical proverbial knee high. But I heard a couple new sound tunes on the tube, and they blasted me sky high. And the record man said, everyone is a yellow sun a record from Nashville. Up north there ain't nobody buys them, and I said, but I will. And I was a Nashville cat. They clean in this country, what a Nashville cat. Play wild as a Mountain Dew Nashville Cats Been playing since they's babies Nashville Cats Get work before they're two Well, there's 16,821 mothers from Nashville All their friends play music and they ain't uptight If one of the kids will because it's custom made for any mother's son to be a guitar picker in Nashville. And I'm sure glad I got a chance to say a word about the music and the mothers from Nashville. Nashville cats, they clean as country water. Nashville cats, play wild as a mountain to Nashville cats, been played since they I sure do want to thank you. Yes, indeedy. I surely do. And the Nashville Cats want to thank you. Oh, I tell you, you know, I haven't been going out much. I've been watching a lot of television. I don't know about you guys and gals out there, but last night my girlfriend and I, we watched three movies back to back. Yeah, thankfully I was the one facing the TV. And you can be sure that if you're feeling right, a 
A daydream will last a long into the night. Tomorrow at breakfast she may prick up your ears. Or you may be dreaming for a thousand years. What a day for a daydream. Custom made for a daydreaming boy. Now I'm lost in a daydream. John opened up as a solo at the Boston Gardens for the Beach Boys. This is November 23rd, 1974. And he, after he finished his set, he came into our dressing room. He came around the bend into our room. He was dressed in tie-dye from head to toe. Well, not from head to toe, but you know what I mean. Completely in tie-dye. He came around the corner saying, Where are the beach children? Where are the beach children? I'll never forget that. He also uh, he also opened uh, uh, for the group July second seventy six at Oakland Coliseum. It was the first concert that Brian had appeared in um, in a while since uh, nineteen seventy three. Show was with Elvin Bishop America and John and the Beach Boys. And uh, John and I had a chance to work with. Uh, Denny Doherty, Michelle Phillips, Al Jardine, Carney Wilson. We did a benefit for Women's Heart Health in Manhattan a number of years ago. And um, it was at a, the, one of the museums in New York City there. And uh, I remember Paul Schaefer showed up and was telling John how to play the beginning of California Dreamin', you know, the opening guitar part. And John didn't want to play it. He had his own method. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but what a great writer, honestly, you know, one of the greats. Uh, and uh, speaking of great writers, do you know how, how poets say hello to one another? How poets say hello? They say, hey, haven't we metaphor? Haven't we metaphor? <laughs> Here's a subtle tune. Some of you may not know this one. But I love this one. It's really true how love matters. No mad, mad world, no mad hatters. No one's fiction because there ain't no banners. In coconut grove, don't bar the door. Tonight we'll find a doom that's ours And softly she will speak the stars Until the sun up It's all from having someone knowing Just which way your head is blowing But who's warm like in the morning this or heard about this. This happened in New York City just the other day. A cement mixer collided with a prison van the other day in the city. Yep, now police are on the lookout for 10 hardened criminals. Hardened cement. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, fall 
I'll start. She's one of those girls that seems to come in the spring. One look in her eyes, you forget everything you had ready to say. And that's our day. The younger girl that keeps rolling across my mind. No matter how much I try, I can't seem to leave a memory behind. I remember her eyes, soft, dark, and brown. Said she'd never been in trouble, not even in town. The younger girl keeps rolling across my mind. No matter how much I try, I can't seem to leave her memory behind. The younger girl keeps rolling across my mind. I shouldn't hang around and act like her brother. In a few more years, they'll call us right for each other. And why? Just die. The younger girl keeps rolling across my mind. No matter how much I try, I can't seem to leave a memory behind. I remember her eyes, soft, dark, and brown. Said she's never been in trouble. Not even in town, the younger girl keeps a rolling across my mind. She's one of those girls who seems to come in the spring. One look in her eyes, and you forget everything. Thank you, John, for for writing that one. I love that line. Said she's never been in trouble, even in town. What a great line. Yeah. I was wondering, did you hear about the claustrophobic astronaut that went up in space? To, claustrophobic astronaut. Yeah, he just needed a little space. There's a seal of approval. And you know, his friend is here tonight, too. Jonathan Siegel. <laughs> Remember that? Remember him? All right. Well, I am going to conclude this wonderful show. Thank you for sticking with me with the song that started it all. This went to number nine, 1965 on Kama Sutra. I like to think of the Spoonful and the Beach Boys and Dino, Desi, and Billy and the Mamas and Papas and the Raiders and Oh, the wonderful groups of the 60s of the year as, a, as a contemporaries of one another. And uh, it, what a great era. All right. Do you believe in magic? Sing with me. In a young girl's heart, how the music can free her. Whenever it starts and it's magic, if the music is grooving, it makes you feel happy like an old time. I'll tell you about the magic, it'll free your soul But it's like trying to tell a stranger about rock and roll If you believe in magic, don't bother to choose If it's junk band music or rhythm and blues Just go and listen, it'll start with a smile That won't wipe off your face, no matter how hard you try Your feet start tapping and you can't seem to find how you got there So just blow your mind You believe in magic Come along with me We'll dance until morning Till there's just you and me And maybe If the music is right I'll meet you tomorrow Sort of late at night Then we'll go dancing Baby, then you'll see How the magic to the music Baby, the music's in me Believe in the magic of 
of a young girl's soul. Believe in the magic of a rock and roll. Believe in the magic that can set you free. Yep, I do believe in magic. I really do. Yes, indeed you do. Well, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna close out the show with these uh, parting words of wisdom, and that is this: Don't be mad at lazy people. Don't be mad at lazy people. They didn't do anything. They didn't do anything. Well, anyway. I'm so glad that you stayed with me, I hope, for the entire duration. Almost hit 90 minutes tonight. That's a new record. Uh, I sure hope to see you next week, God willing, and the creek don't rise. I'm not sure whether we're going to up, go up the eastern seaboard to Boston next week or go a little bit across the country to Detroit. I'm just not sure. I want you to let me know. What do you think I should do? A show based on the great songs that come out of Boston? or the great songs that came out of Detroit. Let me know, so help me make that decision, would you please? And um, if you like what I'm doing, if you like my show and my funny little jokes and my special guests, whoa, John Sebastian. Um, oh, and speaking of special guests, I'm gonna put up this beautiful letter that Jesse Colin Young wrote on my Facebook page, so you can watch for that almost immediately after this show, the beautiful email that he wrote me regarding him and working with the Beach Boys and knowing me. Um, where was I? Yes, do, if you are so inclined, and I hope you are, send in a little something via PayPal or Venmo. Help me keep the lights on and the home fires burn, and you can see the home fires burning right back there. I'd appreciate it, and a portion of the proceeds always goes to Music Cares to help musicians. And I'll write you a special thank you note out of gratitude because I do mean it. I am so very grateful. But for now, let's get on out of here. <laughs> Desi, you're messing with me again. He always does this to me. Then he calls me later after the show and we talk. Here we go. Positivity every day. Positivity in every way. Positivity is my friend Positivity through thick and thin Let's go Positivity is good for my soul Positivity for young and old Positivity for everyone Positivity we just begun Yeah! Thank you so much for stopping by and spending an evening with me. It's been a pleasure and an honor to entertain you tonight. And let's stay positive, all right, everybody? What do you think about that? And uh, I continue to wish all of you all the great things that this wonderful life could bring you. Good night.